<laughs> Big Jones the Juggernaut. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Unleashed at Sea, another episode of the trip that was not supposed to happen. Uh, we are still at sea. We are still sailing. We're actually uh, our last day. Today's our last day. Can you believe it? We've had an eight-day cruise. This is our last day at sea. One more fun day at sea before we got to get back to reality. We're going to be back in Miami tomorrow morning. I can't even believe it. I'm going to miss that view. I'm going to miss this room. I'm going to miss the ship. And I'm going to miss all the wonderful places that we've been to. And one of which, two of which I want to tell you about today because I, um, I didn't get a chance uh, to tell you immediately after about my... Uh, Ports of Call in the Dominican Republic, of which we had two, La Romana and Amber Cove. So I really want to tell you guys about those, but uh, we got held up. You know, I mean, we, 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 we've been enjoying ourselves. I've been trying to crank out a podcast whenever I can, but I, I didn't have time these last couple of days. You know, we've just been enjoying ourselves, having a good time. But I didn't forget about you guys. The juggernaut would never forget about, it, would never forget about his people. So I'm going to get you guys caught up right now. Uh, first of all, before we get started, I just want to let you guys know that I, you know, I, I wanted to do as many podcasts out here on the balcony as possible. Um, the problem was is that, you know, I mean, not that anybody complained, but, you know, I just I, I, I didn't want to go full juggernaut i don't want to go full unleashed because you know there's people here it's people there i don't want to be rude so i, I don't want to go full unleashed out here but i think i can i think i can keep it kind of you know <laughs> kind of pg-13 ish anyway so let's jump right into it so we went to um la romana in the dominican republic had a fantastic time there that might be my favorite uh, port is going to be La Romana and La República Dominicana. First of all, first of all, we actually had a duty free shop. Can you believe it? We actually had a duty free. You know, I don't know what to say. This is all happening so fast. Duty free. Well, I've been complaining that there's that the duty free on the ship isn't all that great. Um, the first two ports of call in Aruba and Curacao didn't have duty free. Um, both ports in the Dominican Republic both had duty free shops. So. That was cool. You know, we had a chance to, you know, look at some local stuff and get some good prices. You know, you know, like I said, we like to get a bottle of, you know, rum or Grammonier or wherever we're at. You know, I mean, they got some good prices and, you know, we like to enjoy a beverage here and there. So we we got a chance to go to the duty free, but that was nothing compared to what happened next. So the again, we booked a carnival uh, shore excursion. It was the um, countryside and beach experience in La Romana. So. Um, again, we had a, uh, we had a bus tour, um, you know, it was a bunch of different people on there from the ship. Um, we had another open air bus, you know, it wasn't a bad day. It was kind of raining the day before it was a little bit of rain, you know, a little bit overcast, but it wasn't too bad. It wasn't as hot as Aruba or Curacao. We had some clouds, like you can see in the background right now, we had some clouds. It wasn't super crazy hot. So it wasn't that bad. You know, we had a couple of downpours, nothing too bad. We didn't get soaked. But when we got on right away, man, <laughs> and I want to make this juxtaposition. Um, we got on. There were the nicest people that we met from the cruise on this shore excursion. We were sitting right up front. Me and my wife were sitting right up front. And there were two other couples. Well, actually, one was a couple. The other was a father and daughter. And... They were just the nicest people. We actually, we actually even met another group, a, you know, a nice uh, black couple. They were both ex-army. We just, everybody on that bus, we just vibed with. They were so nice. Everybody was just really supportive and really cool and just wanting to talk and hang out and have a good time, you know. We really kind of bonded on that one. It was really, really weird, you know, how that can happen with people you don't even know. That's just what happens in the spirit when, you know, people just want to have a good time and just want to go out there and see something new and do some new stuff and get away from their job for a week, you know. People see that, and I think they saw that with me and my wife. We just wanted to have a good time. And for some reason... <laughs> We got another seriously rude tour guide. What is it with these tour guides, man? I'm telling you, they are so fucking rude, man. I'm telling you. I think our tour guy is getting ready to catch these hands, man, because he is rude as shit. He might be the rudest one yet. This one, he was an older gentleman, and he was just, you know telling us to hurry up and to be quiet and don't touch that. And it was like a, he was like a school teacher, man. He was so bad. 
<laughs> I mean, he had his good points. I mean, like, I think he was just kind of wound up tight. He was just very, maybe rude isn't the right word, bossy. He was very, very bossy and very insistent. You know, that was what I could say. His name was Green. He was, I mean, his last name was Green. His name was Francesco. He asked us to call him Green, so I called him Green, you know. But, you know, I mean, I'm trying to talk and make conversation like, hey, you mind if I call you Verde? And, you know, back in the old days, I knew a song uh, called Verde that was on, you know, that was uh, a flamenco song. He couldn't get in with that. Sorry about that. Had a little announcement. Anyway, I'm trying to talk to the guy. I'm trying to just be cool and hang out, you know. And the guy is just very, very stern with me. I mean, I'm a grown-ass man. He was probably in his... 50s you know i mean i don't know he's just not the guy i don't know i mean i don't i mean i don't think he'd not liked me he was just very very bossy and very very insistent i don't know but anyway forget about him for a second so we get on the bus you know everybody's vibing like i said and the first stop we go to is the cigar factory i've never smoked a cigar before i don't have a whole lot of interest but i'm part cuban so i automatically have an interest in cigars so you know I'm like, but you know i mean i'm on vacation i'm gonna check I'm, I'm gonna check it out man it turned out to be one of the best stops man we went to the cigar factory in the in uh, dominican republic uh cigar country was the name of the i guess the the center that it was in but the cigars were from bit Be- were from Vega Fina. I don't know if anybody there is a cigar aficionado if you ever heard of Vega Fina. We went to the Vega Fina cigar factory. Uh not as big as I thought it was. We only saw a handful of people actually rolling cigars, but you know, they took us to the humidor and we could see them and buy a few of them, but what was really cool, we went in there, we got a little bit of history on the cigars, you know, and how they roll them and then we went to the room where there was actually a guy rolling cigars and man, they were so nice and so kind. You know, we were sitting there watching him, and, you know, I, I videotaped him. He didn't mind. This kid looked like he was maybe my son's age, man. He had either that or he had a serious baby face, man. He looked like he was real, maybe like 20 years old. And this kid's just rolling cigars like it's going out of style. And, you know, we watch, and he's posing for pictures, you know. It was really cool. Then he sits my wife down says, hey, do you want to try? Do you want to try? And my wife's like, hell, yeah, I want to try, you know. And she sat there, and she rolled a cigar, you know. He showed her how and kind of hand over hand, you know, and then – you know, he got to, he let her keep the cigar that she rolled and, you know, just great photo opportunity. It was just really a human experience. That was really, really cool. And, uh, you know, of course they took us back to the little, uh, you know, humidor where you can buy some, uh, cigars and you know, we bought a few, we don't really smoke ourselves, but you know, I know a couple of people who do and they would appreciate it. She has a couple of coworkers or friends who, you know, smoke cigars and, you know, you know, you know, when you go on vacation, people always say, Hey, listen, if you're going to get, if you're going to, you know, be around this, you know, this is what I'm into, you know? So we got a couple of presents for friends, which is cool. So you know, that was a cigar factory. Right next to the cigar factory was a chocolate factory, you know. Um, I wouldn't call it a, quote, factory myself. Um, the name escapes me. I'll put some pictures up for you guys, but the name I can't think of right now. But we went to this chocolate factory that was right next to the cigar factory. But, again, I wouldn't really call it a factory. Maybe a chocolate shop. It was really more of a shop. I mean, they had some stuff back there that I guess, you know, was, you know, part of the production process, but I didn't really see people actually working on it. So it wasn't like that kind of environment. It was more for show, I'd say. But anyway, it was still really cool. You know, it was a kind of a weird combination. It was a chocolate shop and a beauty shop right next to it where it had some, uh, lotions and perfume and stuff like that you know i love chocolate i love coffee all that kind of stuff those two things tend to go hand in hand so you know we brought a couple of chocolate bars and i just kind of you know joked around with the people i don't know for some reason people were looking a little bit uh like they had security there and i don't know they were looking like a little bit you know like they saw me and like oh, this guy's gonna be a problem you know but i started joking with them a little bit i speak pretty decent Spanish, you know, so I was joking with him, you know, some of them were kind of muscular, I was like, hey, where's the gym, you know, you guys got a gym around here, he's like, yeah, yeah you, you're pretty buff, oh, you're pretty buff, you know, so, you know, we we bonded like that a little bit, you know, plus they saw I spoke Spanish, so, you know, they kind of relaxed a little bit, you know, but that was super fun, man, that's, I, I, I would love to come back just for that, you know, that was a super great experience, really human experience to see how people work and people, you know, create these things, you know, it was really, really cool. So back to the bus. Oh, quick uh, side note. We actually, we, you know, on our way to the cigar factory, we saw, um, 
the set of where uh, I guess one of the Rambo movies were filmed. And the guy uh, Green kept telling us this is where Rambo made the movie. So <laughs> we actually saw. It. I guess it was Rambo's one and two, which were you know more jungle oriented. Um, but yeah, I took some pictures. I took a video. It looks just like it because uh, uh, Rambo's one and two just happen to, be my, to happen to be my favorite. The first one is actually my favorite, and it looks just like it. It's actually very well preserved. It looks just like it. It's green. It's got those trees just like it. Really, really cool. So that was really neat. Rio Chabon, if you want to look it up online, Rio Chabon is what it's is what that area is called. It's a little sign I tried to get, but I couldn't quite get it. But that's the sign if you want to check it out. Anyway. Uh, from the cigar factory, we go to why can I never remember the second one? That always happens to me. From the cigar factory, we go to oh, crap. Yo, babe, what was after the cigar factory? Chocolate. What was after the chocolate? Oh, uh, 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 the cave. Thank you. No, the cave. Yeah. What, what cave? Oh, no, uh, sugar cane. Thank you. Jeez, Louise. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> She's my executive producer. Yeah, okay. So, the uh <laughs> can't believe I can't remember these things. After this af after the cigar factory went to the sugar cane. This was an experience I really want to talk to you guys about. So, you know, took us about 20 30 minutes to get there we end up going off road you know we knew that the sugarcane plantation was going to be on the list but we did, just real quick are you guys you know black people out there are you guys put off by the word plantation i mean what are you supposed to call it i mean it's a i guess you could call it a farm but it's a sugarcane you know field you know and there's one big house it's a plantation that's what it is i mean i feel like i feel i don't know if there's a better word out there can you put it down in the comments i don't want to offend anybody sugarcane plantation is what i'm going with because i feel like that's what it is anyway we go to the sugarcane plantation we end up going off road and man it was a bumpy ride hurricane ian had come through they'd had some weather so there was kind of wet kind of muddy you know we kind of got stuck a couple times but it was okay we got through just fine and we get off and right away, you know, I mean, it's huge. Like, like I said, I'm Cuban on my mom's side. Seeing all that sugar cane was really, really crazy. So they took a machete. They cut off a couple of pieces. We got to try it, you know. I thought you could, like, eat, eat sugar cane. I guess you just kind of bite it and suck on it. It's really, really sweet. It really tastes good. It's kind of weird because, you know, in America, we're really used to, you know, high fructose corn syrup and processed sugars and all that stuff. It actually tastes almost like alcohol if you've ever had pure sugar cane it's almost like it's kind of a fermented almost like an alcohol taste it's really weird almost like a liqueur like a like a flavorless liqueur really weird but it tastes great and we're sitting there we're chewing on sugar cane and then we got the fresh coconuts and you know he's hacking it off and you know puts a straw in it with a little bit of rum you know and we're just really beautiful out there having a good time it's so green beautiful sugar cane feels out there it just makes you feel like you're in like you're, like you're really in cuba you know i mean cuba is not far away it's right across the street but you know i mean it really feels like you know this might have been what it was like in cuba all those years you know so we're sitting there, we're having drinks, we're taking pictures. All our friends are there. Like I said, we vibe with all these people. It was really nice. We end up going in and it starts to settle in. Like, you know what? This isn't just a stop on an itinerary. This is these people's home that they're inviting us in. I mean, I mean, yeah, we're giving them money and we're paying to be here. You know, they had some stuff for us to buy. But I mean, they're welcoming us into our home. That's really, really the humbling experience that you travel for. You know, these nice people simple people you know um first of all we go in and right away you know there's like everything's handmade these huts are all handmade you know and you know they have this outdoor kitchen you know and this guy is made you know on these you know wood burning ovens making arroz con pollo and it's just delicious man oh my god what's the sad part is and I'll, I'll i'm gonna do another video about this that arroz con pollo that we had in dominican republic on that sugar cane plantation was better than half of the food on this boat ship but <laughs> that was it was really good and it was really you know 
homemade, well seasoned, you know, great food. You know, it's really amazing what they can do out there. You know, they got this outdoor kitchen and they're making this food. They take us back and they show us their garden, you know, all these things that they're growing, you know, pepper and fruits and vegetables and seasonings and spices and all these different kinds of things. They're just growing right out of the ground. It's incredible, you know. I mean, it's like it's like rainforest out there. You know, the ground is very fertile, you know, it's very green beautiful fields out there you know and these people are just welcoming us into their house and i'm trying to just i'm trying to just be grateful like oh thank you like i mean you know with with the arroz con pollo i'm saying oh wow this food is amazing did you make this are you the chef are you the cook and you know guy who cooked it came over and i just want to shake his hand like man it's really good thank you for having us here you know just trying to be gracious you know like what what you would expect anybody if they come to your house And, you know, you open your doors to them, you know, you want to be gracious. You don't want to be, you don't want to take it for granted, you know. So I'm trying to make sure they know that we appreciate it. My wife appreciates it, everybody. I think I was the only one other than the tour guide that spoke Spanish on the, uh, on the tour that was a guest on the tour. I think I was the only one that spoke Spanish. So I was, you know kind of speaking for everybody you know or at least for my wife and I how grateful we were thank you thank you all around and this is the part I really want to tell you about so I'm saying thank you there's this guy you know it was kind of following us around and I said wow this is really great man thank you for bringing us here and we really enjoying ourselves and this is really amazing how you guys work out here like this and because they're they're professional they they work for themselves this is their farm it's their house it's their plantation everything it's this, this is the way they choose to live and the guy gave me this beautiful piece of fruit this beautiful I'm not sure if it's a passion fruit or dragon fruit or I think they called it Pitaya. I'd have to look that up, but I think it was a dragon fruit because some dragon fruit is black and white on the inside. Some of it is red and white on the inside, but this one was red and white on the inside, a fruit that grew off of the, uh, the cactus plant that was there. And he just, he walked me over and he just handed it to me. I'm like, Oh wow, that's beautiful. I thought he was just showing it to me like, wow, that grew right over here. And I'm just impressed. I'm like, wow, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful piece of fruit. I even told him in Spanish, like, yeah, you know, those fruits go for like six dollars a pound where i'm from and he's like i told he's like wow really i grew off of that plant right over there and you showed me which plant it was and i just thought it was beautiful and i said yeah thank you yeah thank you for showing me that and he insisted no take this take it it's for you and i was just i mean i was floored by that i mean that he gave me that piece of fruit out of his farm off of his tree i mean it might not sound like much, but that is a really, really amazing thing to have happen. I mean, you know, simple guy, simple circumstance, you know, me, you know, Mr. Whatever from, you know, California, from the States, you know, and he gave me a piece of fruit off of his farm. That is a huge, huge compliment. That is very, very, that to me was very, very generous. And it was a moment, it was a moment, if you watch my video about, you know, the, the stuff that's been going on with me as far as my mental health and everything, that was a moment that I connected with someone that I haven't had in a very long time, you know, you know, other than my wife, obviously, but, you know, connecting with somebody like that, that, you know, just that, I mean, he didn't offer that to anybody else. You know, he came to me, said, no, I want you to have this. This is, you know, for you. Thank you for coming. And that was just a really, really neat moment there you know i thanked him i gave him a hug i said you know thank you again for your hospitality you know and there was a little bit more after that we tried some local stuff but that that moment right there was really really special i just wanted to share that with you guys um after that you know we sat down and you know they had the little little hut the little awning and they had some chairs set up for us and they had um, a couple of local things they had some low local coffee that they made with some Fresh sugar, obviously, you know, the sugar cane field right out there. <laughs> Plenty of sugar for your coffee. Uh, they also had a drink in Dominican Republic called Mama Juana that I hadn't heard of before, but it's pretty good. It almost tastes like sangria. Um, I couldn't tell you exactly what's in it. I have to go. I actually bought a bottle. I'd have to go and look at it. Maybe on my next video, I'll show it to you guys so you can make up your own mind about it. I'll let you know what's in it, but it's called Mama Juana, all one word, not marijuana. Mama Juana, all one word. So <laughs> that was great. And I mean, you know, I bought a couple of beads kind of like these. You know, I like little things like this, little trinkets like that. You know, just to say I was there. You know, I got, I got another one that's like white and blue, like the Dominican or red, white and blue, like the Dominican flag. That was great. Um, you know, 
it was about this time we got back on the bus and again you know i just thanked them all hey thank you for you guys for your hospitality thank you again for the fruit incidentally i want to tell you guys um when my wife wasn't around she didn't speak spanish anyway but i told her later uh he said um when he gave me the fruit he said hey take this take this before you make love or eat this before you make love to to your wife <laughs> He laughed and I laughed and he kind of gave me a hug and it was hilarious. So <laughs> that was a neat thing to happen. So get back on the bus and the last stop again. I, I just realized now these all all these all these shore excursions came in threes. So three stops apiece. So the third and final stop we went to the beach, beautiful beach, uh, Cuca Beach in Dominican Republic near La Romana, Cuca Beach. I'm not sure how close that is to the cruise port. It's probably maybe 30 minutes away. Um, beautiful beach, you know, it was one of those things where, uh, the tour guy knew a person that managed a, um, a store down there. So, you know, he, uh, you know, he floats him some business and he gives him a cut or whatever, you know, so it was cool, you know, but he showed us around, there was a restaurant, we had some food right there on the beach. We didn't get in the water. We were, we didn't have too much time. We just kind of soaked it in. And that's one of those beaches where everything kind of comes to you. You know, there's, you know, waiters that bring you drinks or if you want to eat or there's music and, you know, photo ops and all that. But everybody just kind of collaborated on the beach all at once. There's a bunch of shops, you know. It was great. Um, the only downside of that beach is there were a lot of bees. I don't know if it was from the trees because there is, uh, being from SoCal, I'm used to not having trees like right on the beach in the sand, but there was like a bunch of palm trees actually on the beach. I don't know how common that is in Caribbean. Maybe it is. I don't know. You tell me. Put it in the comments. But... <laughs> Yeah, there were a lot of bees, and uh, eh, just I mean, we we weren't having like a formal whole meal dinner. We were just having little snacks, little French fries and chicken, and a couple of drinks, you know. So it didn't put a huge damper. Just a more of an advisory for you guys if you go to Cuca Beach in Dominican Republic, watch out for the bees. Um, nobody got stung, so that wasn't a big deal. But one cool thing is, I, I you know, we're out there on the beach. I had to try uh, a cigar. Now I've never smoked anything before not a cigarette not a joint certainly not a cigar but you know like i was saying when in rome we're in the middle of dominican republic my wife rolled a cigar why not so you know she lit it up she's actually quit smoking a year ago but you know we're on vacation it's not a big deal i'm not worried about anybody having any issues so i tried it out it wasn't that bad you know i mean i don't know if i'd get into it myself maybe once in a blue moon but it was just a neat thing to do hey we smoked a cigar that my wife rolled on a beach in the Dominican Republic. Beautiful experience. Great day. You know, what can I say? It was a great, great time. Definitely an eye opening experience. Um, other than that, uh, we got back on the, uh, got back on the, uh, bus, started heading back. And one last thing happened. Remember I was telling you that the tour guy was kind of rude. Uh, my man green, <laughs> just like I said, maybe not rude, just very, very bossy. But I asked him a couple of times because he had, you know, we had rum on the bus and he had, you know, some cups and some Coke and we were having just rum, rum and Cokes right there on the right there on the bus. So, hey, it can't be all bad. You know, we're giving <laughs> we're having rum and Cokes right there on the bus during the tour. So, hey, it can't be all bad. But I like that rum he had. And I was asking him, like, hey, what uh, what uh, what brand of rum? What, what brand of rum is that? Where can I find it? Can I find it duty free? Because I was looking around, I didn't see it. What kind of rum is that? Where can I find it? He ended up just giving me the bottle. That bottle was almost completely full. I'll put a a video up for you guys, but that bottle was almost completely full. But he gave it to us, and uh, my wife smuggled it on board because you're not supposed to have it on board, but we did anyway. So <laughs> we ended up having a really good night that night, which is kind of why I'm just now talking about it. Maybe two days later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we definitely uh, put us to bed with that one. Was, you let us loose on a bottle of uh, Dominican rum, it's going to be a short night. <laughs> so we had a great time with that. It was a great, really, really eye-opening experience. I was thinking that Curacao was going to be the island I want to visit uh, if, I ever, if I ever fly anywhere in the Caribbean and do like a resort or a hotel stay or stay for a week or anything. I was, before the other day, I was looking more at Curacao it's definitely the Dominican Republic for me right now because that place is just really cool, really pretty. A lot of people who look like me. That's another thing I want to touch on just for a second. I live in Southern California. There's a lot of Mexican dudes there, and I speak pretty decent Spanish. Like I say, I'll give myself 70% 
Spanish speaker. I speak Spanish decently well. And I try to speak Spanish like when I go and order like Mexican food or if I see some of my homies around, I'll speak Spanish to them. I'll speak Spanish to them, but they'll speak English back to me. Like, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Any of you Latino homies down there from San Diego, you guys have people non-Mexican that speak Spanish to you. Do you speak Spanish with them or do you just speak English back? You just rather speak English. I don't know. But in Dominican Republic, people came at me speaking Spanish, like initiating speaking Spanish, just assuming I was either Dominican or Puerto Rican or Cuban, something. But a dark-skinned guy that speaks Spanish. And he just... <laughs> They just started yeah, 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 like right away. So I definitely had to be on my A game with the Spanish. It was tough a couple of times. A couple of times, I, a couple of times I had to be repita, por favor, repita, repita, más lento, más lento, más, más lento, lento, lento. <laughs> you know, but we got there, we got through it. But I mean, you know, it was really, you know, uh, like I say, a very cultural experience. This is the cultural experience that you really travel for. So. Had a great time. Amber Cove, I don't have a whole lot to touch on with Amber Cove. You know, the next day, it's Carnival's uh, private island slash resort, private little area. Um, so it really is sort of an extension of the ship. I mean, if not that there's anything, not that there's anything wrong with it, but I mean... Um, you know, we just got off. We had a bite to eat, a couple of drinks, and we just laid out. Met some really nice people. Uh, Frank and Tanya, if you guys are watching this right now, I hope you are. Uh, we really enjoyed meeting you guys, you know, a couple of Cubanos from Miami. You know, they gave us kind of the skinny on what to do on board for our next cruise, and they told us a little bit about Miami and where we should go. So definitely not a wasted trip, but as far as that cultural experience, I mean, you know, there's a couple little kiosks with some local guys there and, you know, it's a, it's more of a resort feel rather than that authentic feel. So, but again, not a bad experience, you know, just consider it an extension of the ship. You know, there's a nice pool, there's some nice restaurants, you can go zip lining. There's, you know, a bunch of stuff to do right there. Uh, there's no beach right there. They actually let us know at orientation. There's no beach in walking distance on Amber Cove, so you'd have to either do a do a uh, what am I trying to say? Do a shore excursion, or you'd have to do a uh, take a taxi or get some kind of a ride. Uh, there wasn't anything right there available, so it really is Carnival's sort of cash grab to get you to do a shore excursion if you haven't already because there's not a whole whole lot to do right there so if you want to get out and into the city into the country you kind of have to pay for it and they kind of make it like that you know not the case at the last uh carnival private island that we went to which was Roatan near Honduras it's actually an island it's an independent island off the coast of Honduras but carnival owns it you, there actually is a beach right there you can actually to get away in uh, Roatan, not spending money on anything. You don't have to spend money on lounge chairs. You know, there's plenty of trees and umbrellas out there, and the beach is right there. So you know, unless you guys want to drink or something like that, but you know, obviously that costs money. But you don't have to spend money to go anywhere if you just want to have a relaxing kind of beach day. So just a little tip: if La Romana and Amber Cove happen to be on your cruise itinerary. Definitely make the most of La Romana if you get a chance to go to uh, Dominican Republic. It's really, really a cool experience. Try to do the local thing. Get out there with some people who are actually from the country. Get to know them. Ask them questions. It's you know, use your Spanish translator or you know, use the tour guide. You know, he spoke both languages. You know, really, really a fun time. And if you want to come and cut some sugar cane with me. Like, share, and subscribe to BJBL Unleashed on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram while you're at it. And I will see you next time for more Unleashed.